Poplar Bridge is a central link in Portsmouth to the community, to the workers. Before this was built, uh, there was a level crossing here. There were so many incidents and so many accidents at this level crossing that it became one of the most dangerous crossings, I should think, in the whole of Hampshire. Um, and that's why the, the council in their day actually decided to build a bridge. It's on a, um, a major artery into the city. It crosses the railway line um, right bang smack in the middle of Portsea Island. Doing work on such a major structure in the centre of the city was going to have major problems and have a major effect on the whole city. It's a, a vital link and even when it wasn't working at 100% performance it was still carrying quite a large amount of traffic. It's made of steel and concrete and the steel has been corroding over the last probably 50 years or so and so we had to first of all reduce the amount of traffic on the bridge from two lanes down to one lane and then um, we knew we'd actually have to stop the traffic altogether. So we've had to do something about it and we decided to rebuild this bridge and it's the best thing we can possibly do. It took um, uh, probably about two years to get the whole project from that point up to a point where we could then actually start thinking about replacing the structure. During one weekend in early November 2005, we got a demolition team to come in and they basically got acetylene torches and burnt out and cut out panels of that steel bridge and lifted those away. They got rid of the deck, they got rid of the supports and then what we had to do was a bit of repair work to the top of the um, abutments, put some supports um, at the top of those and then drop in I think there are 24 concrete, new concrete beams. We identified that the local community was going to be disrupted, especially all the businesses around and schools and just people in general living in the area. So we thought that from a very early stage, it was very, very important to get a community involvement. We've put out uh, quite a lot of public information. We had um, a gentleman come in and he'd update us and then we were sent newsletters every month to the progress. It was very important that we had a project where all the local people could become involved in it and feel that they were part of the project, they could see it as it developed, they could take part in it and I think that really helped. There's a sensitivity about how things are being done here. We analysed the, more or less the, the noise we were going to make and how many people it will affect. And what we did is for the nights that were going to be very disruptive, we decided to put people up in hotels. Uh, for, for Portsmouth to actually sort of do this is, I think, is a real bonus so over and above um, so many other sites in other cities. I think, um, you know, I think that Portsmouth have really done quite a good job in, in, in you know, communicating mm. the message of what we're doing on site. We were constantly updated on everything that was going on. Yeah, it's good. Before we commenced actually b rebuilding this bridge, we, we put in an, uh, a temporary footbridge, which managed to keep the communities together. This particular bridge was a link between several different communities, not just the north-south um, traffic side of things, but it's an east-west communication as well. When we first saw the original designs for the bridge, there was going to be a uh, plain steel parapet there. And I think when, as soon as we looked at those drawings, we said something's got to be done. From the point uh, that Martin identified that the parapets could be an issue, and we came up with the idea of the artwork, then we thought that the artwork should be designed by the local community. We ran the workshops, so that was involved, that was organised in the local schools, adults the local community to actually take part in artistic workshops to gather ideas you know, for artwork on the bridge itself. We also had uh, an open workshop as well where all ages can come and just visit us at a base. It's like having a team of designers that have done the designs for us and, and we're just sort of going up and, and, and kind of 
following their their lead. We 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 sort of hand picked um, twelve main designs for the bridge parapets themselves uh, to to be made into into these twelve. Um, 3D low relief panels. We've already had locals already, come, um, not even finished the project yet, you know, with locals coming onto the bridge now saying they just think it's amazing. I'm, I'm going to be really interested to see what happens. My hunch is it'll just get better and better as it weathers naturally. Time to tell. <laughs> I was going to say time to tell. Well, yeah, yeah, well, that's it, mate. Yeah, yeah. There we go. <laughs> public art should be part of the project right from the very beginning. It shouldn't be something that's added on at the end if we've got enough budget to stretch that. It should be an integral part of it. You know, that grassroots level, we've seen it work. On a, on a much bigger scale, if you took the whole of Copner, I'm not sure what the impact is. They need more facilities in, in local communities to be able to, for the kids to go in the evening and do something creative rather than go on the streets and being distracted. The, the change in behaviour from you know, three naughty boys who can't be in a, in a class because they're too disruptive. And they come and they work with us and they just become star pupils. And they just wanted somebody to say, you're really good at this, aren't you? If, if you provide a facility for them with someone to manage it and give them some guidelines, then they'll just go there and enjoy it and they'll behave really well. You're being, you're being quite nice about it, but I actually think imagination is drummed out out of kids. I've got two children myself, they, they're going through the system. On the whole, you know, I don't think their creativity is, is really um, being sort of serviced at all. Projects like this are really important. Um, it's something that we should be doing all the time, really. years ago in 2000 we used to have two-way traffic flowing over the bridge. When we'd reduced that to single-way traffic with traffic lights that meant lots of traffic jams up and down Cottonwood the road. I'm sure it will have a, a real buzz once it opens and uh, people are waiting you know in anticipation to see how the road will move. We've now got free-flowing traffic with no traffic lights um, and basically the whole thing just flows an awful lot better. I think it's a lot better now they've got rid of the traffic lights because when they had the one-way system, the traffic was a lot heavier. With the traffic lights, it was chaos. Yeah, lights, yeah, lights were horrible. <laughs> it's a lot better now it's all been opened back into two-way traffic. At least now we can have our windows open in the summer, but before we couldn't because of the congestion and the smell and everything. Obviously, our hope is that people that live here are really going to like it. They're so pleased to have it open at last and I think they, most of them do comment, even before I mention it, they comment on the artwork and I think that's been really important for it. It just looks nicer and something looks nicer then it just makes you feel better about the area. I think it's a bit of an improvement as you walk over the bridge there, you've got the artistic designs and that and carved into the walls. It's a bit better than having legal eyes that sprayed up there. <laughs> yeah, I love the fact that they've got an old girder there. I love the pictures, the murals on the bridge. I just think it's very nice. Some thought has gone into it, um, so I think the overall design is very good. I think the whole thing has gone perfect, and, and from start to finish. I lived in Southampton for ten years. I've lived in Portsmouth for one year, and I think Portsmouth is the place to be. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> That's a bit <laughs> <chizzy>. come on. <laughs>